Today we've got a nice calculus problem that's hidden inside a geometric description. And so I'll call this the volume of a pointy circle. So our goal is to find the volume of the solid formed by rotating an equilateral triangle about one of its sides. So let's say we start with the following equilateral triangle and we rotate it about this side which is at the bottom, so the base. Then we get some sort of picture like this. So you can envision this as a three-dimensional object. Okay, well, let's maybe see how we could do that. I'll start by putting this whole thing in the Cartesian coordinate plane. So let's do that. So I've got my y-axis and my x-axis. Let's say that my triangle has side length a, and let's put coordinates over here, a over two, and then over here, negative a over two. So that makes this line segment from negative a over 2 to a over 2, the base of my triangle. Okay, good. <clears throat> but then if I need the side length to be a, that means up here my coordinate needs to be 0 comma the square root of 3 over 2 times a. And we can gain that just by doing the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's connect this. Great, there and there. And now we've got our triangle on the plane and we can view our solid as a solid of revolution which we gain from rotating about the x-axis. And in fact, we're rotating the region below these two line segments about the x-axis. But notice we've got some symmetry here. So if we rotate or if we calculate just the volume produced by rotating everything in the first quadrant, we'll be able to get the entire volume just by multiplying by 2. But in order to take our next step, we need the equation of this line. So let's calculate the equation of this line. Let's notice that we've got two points on the line, which allows us to find the slope. So let's make this into a coordinate. This is the coordinate a over 2 comma 0. And now we can maybe easily calculate the slope as the change in y over the change in x. So we'll do 0 minus root 3 over 2a. That'll give us root 3 over 2a with a minus sign in front of it. And then over a over 2 over 0. So over a over 2. But notice that all simplifies down to just negative square root of 3. Furthermore, we know the y-intercept as that's just given with our setup. So that means the equation of this line is y equals negative square root of 3x plus square root of 3 over 2 times a. So in fact, we can rephrase our goal of determining this volume as determining the volume that we gain from rotating the region bound by the x-axis and this curve about the x-axis. So let's see, our volume will be equal to 2 times pi times the integral from 0 to a over 2 of minus square root of 3x plus square root of 3 over 2 times a, all of that squared dx. So let's talk about where these parts come from. So the 2 comes from the fact that we're breaking this into two parts and only calculating the right half, just use, using symmetry here. The pi comes from pi r squared in the area formula for a circle. This is also kind of the radius for the area formula of the circle. And then our dx is our differential width component, giving us like this little bit of volume. And then we're integrating over that. That gives us a volume of the whole thing. Okay, so anyway, now we're left with a polynomial which we'd like to integrate. So that should not be too bad. So let's do it, but instead of multiplying this out, let's uh, maybe practice our u substitution just to, make, just to make the calculation a little bit easier. So let's set all of this equal to u. So in other words, we have u is equal to negative square root of 3x plus the square root of 3 over 2 times a. That makes du equal to negative root 3 dx. But that means that dx is equal to negative 1 over root 3 du. 
Okay, that means our integral is now two times pi with a minus sign out front that we're factoring from this dx. And then we can put a square root of three in the denominator. And then we'll have the integral of just u squared du. Now we have to talk about the bounds of integration. So let's see, if we plug zero in here, so in other words, if we set x equal to zero here, we'll get u is equal to the square root of three over two times a. So that'll be our new lower bound of integration. Okay, good. And then let's see, for our upper bound of integration, we need to plug in x equals a over two, but notice that gives us u equals zero. So our new upper bound of integration is zero. But let's notice we can take this minus sign and change the order of the bounds of integration. So that'll give us root three over two a here, a zero here if we just scrub this minus sign out. Now we can pretty much just finish this thing off. So this is gonna be equal to two pi over three root three u cubed evaluated from zero to root three over two times a where this three in the denominator came from the power rule, increasing this two to three and dividing by the new three. But now let's notice that root three cubed is exactly three over root three, so that'll cancel. And then we'll have a two cubed in the denominator, which will get canceled down to a two squared in the denominator by this two, and we'll be finally left with a cubed. So our final answer is pi a cubed over four. And that's a good place to stop. Thank you.